So this is a practice that I am calling moving mantra. And mantra is a word that I think we typically associate with words, maybe kirtan, um, maybe a different expression of our yoga or devotional practices. But mantra is really just a word in Sanskrit um, and its etymology is broken down into um, the word manas and tra. And manas in Sanskrit means mind and tra means training. So mantra is ultimately just a training for the mind or a tool for the mind. And we are going to be using our hatha yoga practice, which uses the physical postures and the physical body as a way to train the mind today. So we're really thinking about this entire practice, which includes lots of circular movements as a sort of invitation to training the mind to be present with the here and the now. We are gonna start standing, which we don't always do, a little bit rare, but we're gonna start in a standing position. And when we start standing, I tend to like to just take the feet a little bit wider than hip distance apart. I like that sense of grounding from having a slightly wider base. And then take a moment, maybe lifting and lowering the toes a couple of times, maybe shifting the body weight side to side, forward and back until you really find that sweet spot, that's kind of Goldilocks position where you feel really balanced over the center of the feet. From that place of balance and centeredness in the feet, feel a sense of energy start to ripple up the legs, a sort of elongation through the spine. And then a sense of softening, a slight depression of the shoulders away from the tops of the ears. You might feel your fingertips kind of reaching, elongating towards the floor. And this sense of kind of being suspended in, on the one hand, being really grounded down in some parts of the body, and on the other hand, feeling really light and free and spacious in other parts of the body. And just enjoying that feeling of being suspended here. Mindful that the body is present and the body is breathing. And then we're gonna begin to open up with a more playful kind of swinging motion. So you might open your eyes as you start to just shift your weight from side to side. You can kind of let the knees bend and you're just shifting the weight. And then let the arms start to swing back and forth, forward and back. So we're just letting the arms swing. And then we're gonna take this in a full circular motion. So if I turn sideways, you can really see this. The next time my one arm goes forward, the other goes back, I'm gonna let it keep going all the way up and then around. And so I'm gonna to start to let my arms do this opposite circular kind of motion, one going in one direction, one going in the other. And then my knees are just kind of dropping and lifting. And hopefully you find your own rhythm. And if it feels weird, that's fine. If you feel like you're a fish out of water swimming in space, that's okay too. And then here's the really tw tricky part reverse. So you've got to go up and then down and around. So we want the arms up at the same time and then they kind of sweep down and around. And this is just as much of a mind training, which is what we're doing with mantra, as movement is. Our mind is really having to work with this movement. Go for four and three and two and one. Beautiful. Take the arms out wide. Take the feet a little bit wider. Take your right arm and draw a big circle reaching over towards the right hand slightly behind you. Wide to the right and then forward. Palms meet and then reverse. Right arm forward, out, back behind you. Palms meet and then open up. Take your right palm, bring it to your chest, slide down the inside of your left arm, push the palms together, and then unravel, sliding that right arm in across the chest and open. Other side, left arm is gonna take that big circle, palm behind you, open, forward, palms, and then reverse, forward, open, back, palms 
open. Then bring left hand to chest, slide down the inner right arm all the way until the palms touch, and then unravel going the opposite direction, hand across the chest. One more time each side, right arm goes back, around, forward, palms meet, big circle. You can make it as big, exploratory as you want to make it. Then you bring that right palm to the chest, slide down the inner left arm, palms press, and then retracing the length of that left arm out wide. Last side, left arm, big circle around, back, wide and forward. Lots of circles in today's practice, back, around, and forward, left hand to the chest, slide down the inner right arm, palms meet, then slide back up the length of the inner right arm and wide. Beautifully done. Heel toe your feet a little bit closer together, about hip distance apart. Start to strut the feet so you're lifting up onto the balls of the feet and kind of rocking the weight from side to side, feeling a sort of stretch on the underside of the foot here. Good, and then we're going to start to play with lower, more kind of deeper gravity movement to more higher elevated balance. So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna do three quick, one slow. The three quick are gonna be a little bit lower, more grounded. The one slow is gonna be higher and more balanced. So it looks like this. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. So it's like low, 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 balance. That's it. Low, 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 balance. And try to keep the pelvis kind of steady as you rock on those faster ones, high. Whoop. And then low, 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 up. That's it, keep it going. Three, three, up. And a one, two, three, up. Two more each side. Rock, rock, rock balance. So you're moving, 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 stop. One more each side. Last time, one, two, three. Lower the heels and just shake out the ankles. So even me, and I've done this quite a few times the last week or so, I feel that in my ankles all around the lower part of my calf and Achilles. If you're not already at the front of your mat, make your way there. We're gonna do a, a kind of some play time with our chair pose today. And it's gonna start with this really fluid wave-like motion. So we're gonna start to just kind of like ripple through the spine down to the floor, and then you roll your way back up. So it's almost like you're passing through a really sloppy chair as you go down, and then you roll your way back up. So think of this as like a full body roll. If I were gonna be silly, which I often am, I would probably call this the slinky pose. So I want you to think of being like a slinky as you're rippling through the spine here. And just take about three more of this kind of slinky rolling movements because then we're gonna add on. And so the next time you come down to the floor, you could listen or you could watch, plant your palms, step your left foot back as if you were coming into down dog, sweep your right leg up towards the ceiling for three-legged dog. Then step the right foot forward, the left foot forward, slinky it up, slinky it down, shift sides, palms plant, right foot back, left leg high, left foot forward, right foot forward, slinky up slinky down. Two more times each side, left foot back, right leg flies, right foot forward, left foot forward, slinky, and down. Step back right, fly left, step forward left, right, slinky up, slinky down. Step back left, fly right, Right, left, slinky up, slinky down. Step back right, fly left, step left, step right, slinky up, 
slinky down. Last one, step back left, fly right. Downward facing dog, right foot meets the left. Feel free to walk your dog, anything that feels good here. So movement, just as much as positive affirmation, words, can be a mantra. It can be a training, a tool that helps us to kind of cultivate attention in the mind, a sense of concentration and focus, cultivating something particular through movement. One more breath here in Downward Facing Dog as we switch into some sun salutations. We're going to start with a totally classic lunge salutation from right here. So without moving your feet, lower the knees to the mat. I'm going to move my right thumb to my left thumb and step my right foot forward for a lunge. Settling in, you could bring hands onto blocks here. You could walk them up onto the thigh. Anything that feels good. We'll take a couple of breaths just to kind of settle into the body. One more breath right here. We're going to take it straight back to that downward facing dog. Hands down, step it back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. I'm going to stick with knees, chest, and chin today. If you're feeling a little bit more energetic and you want to go straight to plank and chaturanga, by all means go there. Knees, chest, and chin, or that plank to chaturanga. If you're in Ashtangasana, slide to the belly, find cobra or up dog. And then lifting back up, downward facing dog where we all meet. Second side, knees come down, left thumb to right thumb, step that left foot forward, finding Anjaniyasana lunge, finding that position that feels like it's really meeting your body where it is. Taking another breath here. And then hands come down to the mat. We're going to come forward. So right foot's going to step forward to meet the left, finding our Uttanasana at the front of the space, and then sweeping arms out up, maybe a back bend at the top, and hands to heart center. Two more sun salutations. Release the arms, stand tall, full inhale. Exhale, bring the palms of the hands together, position one. Listen carefully, reach the arms forward, up, and back. Little back bend here. And then we're gonna take a chair pose, but I want you to stop for just a second. Stand up straight. Normally we think hips back. We're gonna do that in a minute, but not right now. I actually want you to do a variation of chair where it's knees forward. So when you come into your chair pose, if you were to look down, you should not be able to see your toes because your knees are actually in front of your ankles. That's what I want for this variation. And I want you to feel more of that lower Achilles as you're breathing here in this version of your Utkatasana chair pose, notice my heels are so light, they almost want to pick up. My toes are gripping the mat a little bit here. L totally different awareness in this shape. Last inhale. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. We're going to lead with the right as so we step the right foot to the back of the mat. Lower the right knee down. And I want a relatively shallow lunge. Notice I don't have a super deep lunge here because we're moving into gecko pose. So my knee is going to drift in front of my ankle, similar to that chair variation we just did. And again, I'm wanting to stretch the lower calf down into my Achilles. You could have hands on the floor. You could have them on blocks, or you could take chest expansion here, interlacing the fingers and drawing the knuckles back. One more deep breath, really heavy in the left heel. Then gently release the hands down, step it back, classic Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Back to practice of your choice here, either knees, chest and chin or plank to chaturanga. Either cobra or upward facing dog. Everybody gathering back in downward facing dog. Pausing for a breath in and a breath out. Second side, looking forward, bringing the right foot forward. You could always lower that left knee for a more gentle transition. We want a more shallow lunge, 
because we're coming into gecko. So we want knee in front of ankle. When you get really steady in the legs, deciding do you want hands down for extra support, maybe hands on blocks or chest expansion, interlacing the fingers and drawing the knuckles towards the back of the mat. Energy moving down through the right heel. And then gently releasing hands to the mat. Step left foot forward to meet the right. Uttanasana. And then reaching out, up, and back. Hands to heart center. Last sun salutation. Release the arms. Stand tall. Bring the palms together. Position one. Position two. Arms sweeping forward, up, and back. Chair pose, standing up straight. This time, hips back. So I want pelvis back. If you look down, you should be able to see all 10 toes here, okay? The awareness here is in the back of the legs, the glutes, the thighs, yes. And the heels feel a little heavier. The toes feel a little lighter. Really different from that variation where the knees were forward. Last breath here with hips back, Uttakatasana. And then forward fold, Uttanasana. We'll lead with the left, stepping the left leg back. Left knee down, 90-90 lunge here. Keep those back toes tucked. Reach the arms up. Take a moment, firm up the glutes a little bit, stabilizing the pelvis because we're gonna be lifting up. So feeling the arms reaching up, and then as if somebody grabbed your wrists and just pulled you upward, you're gonna hover just a few inches off the mat here. Let the glutes squeeze and hold you, breathing for two. Really active in those legs. One more inhale, moving mantra, movement as a mind tool. Hands down to the mat, step it back, downward facing dog. Your vinyasa, either knees, chest, and chin, or plank through chaturanga. Either cobra or up dog. Back to downward facing dog, that meeting point, the rendezvous point of the sun salutation. Left foot steps forward. Remembering we're coming into a 90-90 here. Back toes stay tucked. Arms reach up. Take a moment, stabilize the position, front of the body to back of the body. Arms reaching up, legs rooting down. Then feel that point of anchoring in the ball of the right foot and popping up and holding. Strong in the pelvis, that's it, two. One more breath in. Breath out, Uttanasana, right foot meets the left and fold. Sweep the arms out, up and back. Hands to heart center, close it out. Release the arms, close the eyes. Thinking about what are the mantras you tend to say in your life, whether they're conscious or they're unconscious. What are those messages that just roll through your mind constantly? And how can we use movement, really conscious movement like this practice, to actually get out of some of that carousel of thought into the body and use the body as a pathway to help to train the mind? Moving mantra. Blinking open the eyes. If you need a quick sip of water, this is a great time for it. Any adjustment for the clothing, go ahead and take that. I know I feel like my leggings shift in all sorts of places they're not supposed to when I'm moving. So adjusting that. Nicely done. The one thing I want to show as a part of this sequence so that you're not super confused is when we get to the part where we're doing our skandhasana, I'm going to invite you to take a seat and we're going to work with some hip mobility. So I'm going to have you tap kind of inner knee across the knee, inner knee, and then we internally rotate and tap. This foot is floating and we do that a few times. So that's kind of that motion that we're going to do. And then we're going to see if we can pop back up hands free. Just playing with hands free, lifting and lowering if possible. We're gonna start at the front of the mat. 
So finding your way there, we're going to revisit some of those poses that we kind of cultivated in our sun salutations. So finding your mountain pose, release those arms alongside you. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, knee forward, Utkatasana. So knees forward in front of the toes. This is where we're feeling the lower calves and the Achilles. Take a full breath in here. As you breathe out, feel that energy move down the body into the feet. Now lift up to tiptoe pose. You did this in our warm up, rising up onto the balls of the feet, Prapadasana. Whole body like a sharpened pencil. Breathe in here. As you exhale, sit down into pelvis back chair pose. Heels lower, pelvis moves back. You feel the thighs and the glutes. If you peek down, you could see all 10 toes. Full breath in, full breath out. Back up to Prapadasana tiptoe pose, rising up like that sharpened pencil, feeling solid, straight, sharp. One more in breath. Exhale, lower the heels, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, take a half lift. It just feels nice in the spine. Take a vinyasa, stepping or floating back through your vinyasa. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Inhale, high to the balls of the feet. Exhale, hips to heels, squat at the back of your mat. Right thigh super glued to your rib cage as you step forward, right foot behind right wrist, you're in a lunge. Lower your left knee, gecko pose. Lift the torso, drop the arms alongside you. Let that right knee drop in front of that right ankle. We did this in our sun salutations. You've already been here, you know what you're doing. One more breath. We're gonna press up to the 90-90. So lift out of the gecko to 90-90. Tuck those back toes, reach the arms up, power through the legs to hover and lift. Full breath in, full breath out. Opening up to skater's pose. So I'm gonna to turn towards this gorgeous painting behind me. You're gonna to turn to the wall to your left as you find your skater's pose. You could take a high skater as I'm showing now, or you could drop it low, getting into your skater. We're gonna stand straight up to star pose. Strong through those legs, stand up, five-pointed star. Skater opposite direction, left knee bends. Skater and star. One more each side, skater and star and skater and star. Skater on the right, and this is where we sit, hips to mat, and we do that hip mobility with the taps. So right heel taps inside the left knee, then outside the left knee inside the left knee, then internally rotate that right leg and tap the inner right knee. Do that twice more. Right heel to inner left knee, right heel to outer, right heel to inner, tap the right knee. One more time, heel, 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 knee. Lift your right knee, plant your right foot, and see if you can hands free, get back into skater and press all the way up to star. Whoo! Goddess pose, bend the knees, find those goddess arms, also known as field goal post arms, settle in through the pelvis. Just one more breath here. Reach the arms long, and then like you're closing a big old book, I want you to sweep your left arm forward and around until your left palm meets the right palm at the front of your mat. Good, you're in a high lunge. Well done. Settle in there. You may wanna watch this the first time. Dynamic balance, we love dynamic balance. It's so challenging and so yummy. We're gonna go from revolved high lunge, I mean, sorry, revolved high, um, half moon to eagle. Okay, so it's gonna look like this, right hand to waist. 
I'm going to shift forward and tap, and then I'm going to sweep, and I'm just going to hug my arms. I'm going to extend back and tap, and then find eagle, hug my arms. Two more times, join me. Tap the left arm, left leg behind you. Eagle pose, give yourself a hug. Last time, hold. Left hand on the floor, maybe right arm to ceiling. Two. Lift it up, eagle pose, but you're giving your arms a hug. Left thigh over right. Hugging the upper body. Half salutation, unravel it all. Sweep the arms out and up. And brrr, folding over the legs. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Sweep those arms out and up. And hands to heart center. Shake it out. Take a moment before we do the second side. So that dynamic movement is so valuable because it is challenging your balance. It's also challenging your mind because when you're trying to balance while you're moving, you can't be anywhere but that present moment. So those dynamic movement with the balance is one of the most valuable parts of the practice that we work with. It's also one of the hardest. So cut yourself some slack. We're going to get ready for the second side. Finding ourselves at the front of the mat. Finding that mountain pose. And here we go. Sweep those arms out and up. Knee forward, Utkatasana. Knee forward. It's a pretty shallow chair pose, but man, do you feel the calves. Toes get a little bit more wakey-wakey here. And then lift it up to that Prapadasana. Find your balance. One more in-breath here. And then as you lower the heels, you're going to settle into a pelvis back, Utkatasana, much more of a classic variation. Feeling the back of the thighs, the glutes. And then rising back up, tiptoe pose, Prapadasana. Strong, straight, focused. Lower the heels, fold over the legs, Uttanasana. And then take the half lift just because it feels yummy. And then either straight to down dog or join me for a vinyasa, your choice. Up dog and down dog. Inhale to the balls of the feet. Exhale, squat at the back of the mat, hips to heels. Left thigh now super glued to the left torso as you step forward into lunge. Lower the right knee, untuck the right toes. Gecko pose, arms alongside you, knee in front of the ankle, that's it. Settling in, deep, deep gecko pose. Transitioning back to 90-90, slide the body back, tuck these back toes, yes. Reach the arms up, down through the legs, up through the rest of the body, squeeze, hold. Can you feel my, can you hear my voice shaking? This is hard. <laughs> and then we're gonna open it up into our Skandasana skater pose. So you're turning to your right, sitting down into your skater pose and then standing straight up to your star and skater and star. Hello legs, skater and star. Moving mantra, movement training the mind, star. Last time we sit to the left, lower the pelvis, hip mobility with those taps. So we tap the left heel, inner knee, outer knee, inner knee, there. Yes, tap heel, 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 knee. One more, tap, tap, 
knee. Plant the foot, maybe hands free, pressing back up to our star. Settle into our goddess. Whew. Strong for a breath. Settle in. Take those arms wide. Open up and then close it whew, to the front of the mat. Palms meet. Take a breath here because we've got that crazy dynamic movement coming. You're doing that revolved half moon into the eagle legs with the hugging of the arms. Okay, you ready? We've got three of each pose. We can do this. Here we go. Left hand to hip and we go. Shift the weight forward. Find that revolved half moon. Lift up, right thigh over left, hug. Oh, this side is harder. Right arm down, right leg back, up, and hug. One more time dynamically, and down, and up, and cross. This time we hold, really establish the pose. Maybe elongate that left arm up. Access that twist a little bit deeper. Then slowly pick it up. Build your eagle pose. Right thigh over left. Hugging of the upper body. Half salutation. Sweep it out and up. And fold. Half lift and fold and rise and hands to heart center. Release the arms. Okay, friends, what do we do when we have a mantra? We say it over and over again. <laughs> That's what we do, right? Good or bad, for better or for worse. We're going to do this sequence one more time on each side, okay? Repetition is powerful, and it's also how we train our mind. <laughs> so we're going to do that sequence one more time, hopefully a little bit more fluidly, with a little bit more confidence, knowing where the hard spots and tricky spots are, knowing where we need to be a little bit more gentle with ourselves. So finding the front of the mat, trying to match our movement with our breath, keeping our mind connected to what we're doing in this moment. Here we go. Take a breath in. Let the breath out. Sweep the arms out and up. Knee forward, Utkatasana. So pretty shallow. Feeling that awareness in the lower calves, the Achilles. As you inhale, rise up onto the tiptoes, feeling that strength and confidence in the balance. Settle down, hip back, Utkatasana, pelvis really reaching behind you. And then rising back up to that strong, confident tiptoe balance. As you lower the heels, fold over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Step that left foot back. Lower the left knee down. Gecko pose. Right knee in front of left ankle. Settle in. Feel that gecko. Shifting back, 90-90. Tuck those back toes. Reach the arms forward and up. Here we go, like a puppeteer grabs your wrists, power up, hold, yes. Skandasana, turn to your left, drop in skater, and stand up star, and to the left, and star, and to the right, and star. And to the left. And star. Sit, moving into our hip mobility. Settle gently. And then tap heel, tap heel, tap heel. Inner knee. And heel, and out, 
and in and inner knee. Long, tall spine and tap. Yes, you got it. Inner knee. Plant the right foot. Shift the weight forward. Stand up, star. Sit down, goddess. Ha. Huh. Take a breath. Notice if you're clenching your toes. Reach the arms wide and then close it up to the front of the mat. Take a breath. You've got that dynamic movement coming. You know it's coming. We're going to do our best. Right hand to the waist. Here we go. Shift forward. Revolved half moon. And then up. Eagle with the hug. And back. And up. One more time dynamically before we hold. Back and up. Last time, left leg back and hold. Right arm could reach up. Maybe that twist becomes a little bit more established in the body. And then lifting up, eagle pose balance. Hugging the torso. Feeling the fingers reach around to the outer shoulders. Half salutation. Arms sweep out and up. Let it go. Fold over the legs. Whew. Inhale, half lift. And fold in. Sweep those arms out and up. And hands to heart center. Take three breaths to pause between sides. Release your arms. Reestablish the breath. I noticed that you got short change to vinyasa there. We'll make sure we fit it in on this final side. Enjoy one more breath in this mountain pose. Here we go. Sweep those arms out and up. Knee forward, Utkatasana. Feel that awareness in the lower legs. Keep the heels heavy. Rise up to the balls of the feet. Tiptoe pose. Strong ankles. Settle down. Let the pelvis lead as you sit back. Utkatasana. Feeling the glutes. The underside of the thighs. Rise up. Prapadasana tiptoe pose. Lowering the heels, folding over the legs, Uttanasana. Oh. Inhale, half lift. Here's where we're going to make that vinyasa happen on this side. Stepping or hopping back. Up dog. Down dog. Inhale to the balls of the feet. Hips to heels, squat at the back of the mat. Left thigh glued to the left side of the torso. Step it forward, lunge. Now we find our gecko, lower right knee, left knee melts in front of the left ankle. Settle in. Feel that heavy sense of gravity in the lower body. Then start to draw the body back. Tuck the right toes, reach up. That imaginary puppeteer grabs your wrists and you're floating. One full breath, 90-90 lunge and then skate it out. Left knee bends, skater. Rise to star. And skater. And rise to star. I think all of our legs are gonna feel this tomorrow. Skater and our hips. And stand. And skate right. And shine star. Last one, we sit. So left knee bends, sit with control, and then we tap. Heel, outer, inner, and knee. Heel, outside, inside, knee. Last time, one. And tap, and tap, and knee. Plant the left foot. Get that momentum, shift it forward. Here we go. And up, yes. Sink it down, goddess. Oh, feel that sense of settling. Take those arms wide, big breath in. As you breathe out, close it up to the front of the mat. Left hand to waist, 
Final stretch. Here we go. Dynamic balance, revolved half moon to our eagle. You ready? This is my hard side. <laughs> we can do hard things. Shift forward and tap an eagle. My left hip is way less stable than my right. So this is a lot harder work on this side. One more time dynamically. Down and wrap. And now we hold, finding that revolved half moon. Grow into the pose for a couple breaths. Start to lift it up. Find your eagle. Give yourself a hug. Half salutation. Sweep it out. Fold over the legs. Inhale, half lift. And fold. We're going to child's pose. Plant the palms, walk the feet to the back of the mat. Lower the knees, hips to heels. Child's pose, balasana. Let yourself land. Mm. Noticing that hopefully that moving mantra had you fully mentally attuned to what you are doing moment by moment. We're going to flip into our backs as we prepare for a couple of closing asanas. If you have a neighbor nearby you, be aware because we are going to be in supine splits. So you'll want to space yourselves where your legs are not kicking your neighbor. So as you find your way onto your spine, take the legs wide into a V position. And I like to place my hands on my inner thigh to kind of hold my legs here. Sometimes we do this against the wall, but we're not going to be here super long. So the arms are kind of helping to stabilize the shape. And as much as you can, we've got about 15 more seconds here. See if you can let gravity kind of take over the pose. Try to release as much effort as possible. And then you're going to have to bring a little bit of awareness into the legs as you kind of energize them because you're going to take your arms wide into a T position with the palms down. We're going to close the left thigh and the left leg fully over the right. So I'm going to kind of tilt my body to the right until my right leg lands on the floor. My left leg lifts to the ceiling and then it fully closes all the way over the right. So it's like I'm in a piked position in my twist. If it feels good for the head or the neck, you could always lift the head, turn it to the left. Let the belly be soft. Let the breath be intuitive. Its own natural rhythm. And then letting the head come back to neutral if you had decided to turn it. We'll start to open the legs once more into that supine Upavishta Konasana, lifting left leg to ceiling and then opening out into the side splits. Pause for just a moment and then switching sides, letting your body tilt to the left until the left leg finds the floor, right leg lifts to the ceiling and closes all the way over the left. Your little piked position here. Maybe lifting and turning the head to the right. And then slowly bringing the head back to center, letting the knees soften as you slowly roll back onto your spine. And then moving into Shavasana, extending the legs and the arms in a way that feels comfortable for you.
Settling in for about a 90 second to two minute Shavasana here. Recognizing the incredible tool that we have at our disposal in the form of our physical body. We know that our mind is biased towards some negativity, biased towards distraction. And so we can use the body through mindful movement to help to train our minds, which is the very essence of a mantra. So that over time, the way that we move in the world, both on and off the mat, become our very own mind training. Using the body to work for us, to be fully present in this wonderful moment. As we prepare to close the practice, allow the breath to brighten and become a bit more invigorating. And then welcoming any movement in as you begin to awaken the body until eventually you feel ready to make your way back up to a comfortable seat. We'll bring the palms of the hands together as we close this practice, asking that the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light, which sounds like these four words in Sanskrit. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. Victory to all of our practices.